I'll give you a very personal and very practical okay. example of what I actually do. One of the things that I do in my daily life is when I leave my house and leave the children and my wife behind, if I'm dropping my children to school, if I'm saying goodbye to my wife as she goes to work, one of the things that I do is that I acknowledge within my mind every day that could be the last time I see them. Okay. So I drop my children to school and say goodbye and have a nice day and I walk away and I remind myself that could be the last time I see them. Mm -hmm. So what am I doing? A lot of people will say that's a very morbid way of thinking. Well, it isn't actually a morbid way of thinking. The morbid way of thinking is having utter grief at the end when it actually does happen. This is actually a very healthy and very practical way of dealing. When I wake up in the morning, every day I acknowledge this could be my last day today. I prepare myself yeah, yeah. that I could die. If I say that every single day, today could be the day I die, you know what? One day that's actually going to happen. I don't know when it's going to happen. Don't assume you're going to live till you're 100 years old. Yeah. Every day, I could die today. And this is a very healthy, practical way of saying I'm preparing and I'm willing to accept hukum no matter what. Now, it'll be nice if I don't die today. It'll be nice if my wife and children don't die today. But I'm not going to hold on to that idea, please don't let them die. Understand. And this is what we do. Yeah. Please don't let them die today. Please don't let them die tomorrow. The reality is, I'm not going to hold on to either of that, that, that way of thinking. I'm actually going to say, they could die today, and I'm going to prepare now. Yes. If they don't die today, that's a bonus. But if they do die today, I've already dealt with their death. So their death has already happened to me. I'm going to deal with that emotion now and do that with every person. Yes. Don't assume. Look, the reality is we can't assume that we even have the next breath. Yeah. That's a real reality. And we can say, yeah, that's true, that's true. But how true have we made that? Like when we breathe, are you okay when you breathe in that you might not breathe out? Are you okay with that? No, it makes sense. Yeah, exactly. And, and yeah. you have to be okay yeah. with that. So meditation and Nam Simran is a daily practice that I am going to die and make Nam Simran a death. Okay. Now, now what do I mean by that? Yeah, because that, that, when you're saying Nam Simran, I'm thinking of just doing your Simran. So if you could elaborate on that, of what we need to do to help us. Right. Gurbani says, die into Nam. Okay. Gurbani says, die into the Shabad. And what that's saying is, do Nam Simran in such a way, not that I'm trying to call God, no. or I'm trying to remember God, okay. do Nam Simran to die. Okay. To do Nam Simran to the, to the point at which all you're acknowledging is life is here, and I am an insignificant part of life. Okay, yeah, I and, understand. And yeah. One, way, one of the ways I like to think about Nam Simran is, Nam means Na Me. I am not. I am not. Okay. I am not. So the whole purpose of Nam Simran isn't to say, God, make me feel better. No. God, I, I want to see you. The whole point of Nam Simran is you are here and I don't need to be here. In fact, I'm not here. In fact, this body isn't me. One of the words that Gurbani uses, Gurbani says that we are all walking corpses. Right. When do we ever see ourselves in that way? What do we mean by that? Gurbani says, you are a body mm -hmm. within which life has been put in. And what do we say? This is my body, this we is do. my life. Yeah, Gurbani do. says, don't use that language. Okay. Gurbani says, this is a body and life has been put in and we don't know when life is going to be taken out. Yeah. Do Nam Simran in such a way that acknowledges life as the most important thing, not you as the most important thing, to the point at which you can become so comfortable yes. with the idea Look, Nam Simran is a bit of a death, yeah. right? When you wake up early in the morning, that's like a time when everyone says, I don't want to wake up in the morning, my life is too important, my sleep is too important. The Gursik actually says, my life is not important. Acknowledging the greatness of the universe is more important. So it's kind of like a death, like you wake up first thing in the morning. What I mean by a death is that you don't really care about your own needs and wants. Right. Kirtan Sohila, very interesting, at the end of the day, we read a Barney that is supposed to be read when somebody dies. We read that every night. We do, yes. So what we're doing is every night we go to sleep acknowledging, I'm going to die. And I'm okay with my death. We normalize death to such a point. Let's, let's take Kabirji. 
Kabirji takes death to one step further. He says, Mohe marne ka chao hai. Which, and that means? He says, I want to die. Okay. I'm looking forward to death. Kabirji also says, Jis marne te jag, jag dare mere man anand. That death that everybody is so afraid of, oh. I find bliss in that. Okay. So Nam Simran has one purpose alone for you to die. So you're meditating that you, 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 you are so great. Okay. It's, not, it's nothing to do with me. I'm not important. So this is the whole purpose of Nam Simran, is that we create such a comfort with our death, that death is no longer something that we're shying away from. Yes. Death is not something that we're afraid of. So this is the language of the Gursikhs. And this yeah. is why I think, you know, when normal people talk about death, they talk about loss and pain. Gursikhs don't talk like that. And we see great examples where Gursikhs have lost loved ones and they're using the Guru's Bani. They're using the Guru's language, which is that this is fine. Mm. This is Hukam. Didn't we know this was going to happen? Yeah, do you know what, Bhaji, that's been 